Okay, so that's just started recording, guys. Okay. Okay, so I want everyone to give me an answer. Just write in the chat for me, and then we'll we'll talk it through what our answer is. I'll get someone to who's got it right to say it out loud. Okay. If you're not sure, just send me a question mark. Okay. Okay, great. Aria, are you going to send an answer as well? Well, we'll talk through. So, uh, Rio, you answered that one first. So, tell us, tell us what kind of transport this is. Um, exocytosis. Exocytosis. Perfect. Perfect. So, let's talk through the other options. So, what is cytokinesis? You remember, guys? Anyone? Is that a form of transport cytokinesis? No. No, remember it's in the cell cycle, isn't it? Cytokinesis. It's the last bit where it cleaves off. Okay. So endocytosis, so that is transport across the cell membrane. But that's entering, isn't it? Remember? Exo exiting, endo entering. So it's the mass movement, isn't it? Exo and end endocytosis. Okay. Exo is outside of the cell. So you can see in this one that when the mass movement of something outside the cell. So you're both right. So it's exocytosis. And then phagocytosis, that's in the immune system. Remember, we were talking about the white blood cells kind of eat the pathogen. OK, but that's still a form of endocytosis. OK, because it's going into the path into the um, immune cell. Well done, both of you. Perfect. OK, so we've definitely done this one about cell membranes. So. Which label A to D indicates a component of the membrane that can affect its fluidity? And bonus point, if you can name it for me in the chat. Perfect. Zareen, do you want to give, give us your answer? Um, I said it's D. Yeah, and what do you think it is? Have you got any idea what it is? Um, I'm trying to remember the name. So is it fatty acids? Not quite, not quite. Aria, what do you think this is, D? Uh, I said it's the uh, cholesterol because that's what like determines it. Yeah, perfect. Well done, Aria. Yeah, it's cholesterol. So as I remember, remember when it gets a really low temperature, our cell membrane, you know, stays still. Um, it doesn't let much in and out because there's not much kinetic energy. There's not much vibrating. Okay, so it's it's quite stiff our cell membrane at low temperatures but that cholesterol helps the fluidity and helps the movement okay so that's what it is so if we weren't sure in this so you all got it right but if we're looking at this question we could be thinking oh it could you know it could be c i, I wouldn't put it past that it's obviously not b because that's you know going through the whole membrane so that's either you know that's probably a channel protein that i'm guessing um a you've got your you like a protein off it haven't you okay so C is very similar to A. So I'd say that's a protein C. OK. And then we've not actually labelled one of the phospholipids in this, have we? It's not labelled, but D. Yeah. So D is your cholesterol. OK, perfect. Well done, guys. OK, great. So this diagram is showing a transport across the cell membrane again. OK, so let me just. Oh, we don't need to scroll down anymore. OK, so we've got two. We've got Y and we've got Z. All right. We need to know what what molecule it is and what process we're moving it by. So have a think. Is it going to be A, B, C, or D? We'll give you 20 more seconds, just so everyone has a go. If you stuck, remember just a, a question mark's great. Okay, so let's go through this. There's a there's a few bits to it. Okay, so we'll I've had a couple of answers. OK. And we, you know, need to have a look. So I think the first bit is we need to look how they're being moved. OK. Are they moving, you know, via a protein or anything like that? And the other thing is, are they move, being moved from low to high concentration or high to low concentration? I think these are the two bits we need to look at. So let's look at why first. OK. How is how is this one here being moved? Is it? Is it, is it being moved through a protein, just a fusion? What do you think? <laughs> a few of you changing your answers here. Is it? It's not moving through anything, is it? It's just moving through the membrane. Yeah, never see that. So it's just going to be. It's not facilitated diffusion or anything like that, is it? Okay. 
Is it moving from low to high concentration or high to low concentration? How many have we got on this side? We've got four on this side and we've got three on this side. So it's moving from high to low concentration, okay? So it's moving straight through the membrane and from high to low concentration. So that's going to be simple diffusion, isn't it? Okay. So why? So we can get rid of, if we look at our options, it's not being moved by active transport. Okay. So let's get rid of them. We're not sure if it's glucose or oxygen, but we can be sure if it's glucose or oxygen. We can find our answer here. But let's go for the other side first. Okay. Now we've got this it's moving through a protein isn't it okay so that's going to either be you know facilitated diffusion or or active transport okay it's moving from it's got three on one side and one on the other so it's moving again from high to low concentration so it's not going to be active transport is it it's going to be diffusion okay we don't have an option here for facilitated diffusion so we're just going to put it into diffusion because they haven't just put simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion. They've just put it under one umbrella term. OK, so let's get rid of our active transport. OK. So it's not active transport. So we can see that the answer is going to be D. OK. Does that make sense, guys? By just looking, if it's going from high to low concentration, we can get rid of the active transport because neither are going from high to low concentration. We don't need to know which way round the molecules are to answer this question, okay? You just need to look, what are the properties of movement across cell membranes? And you, you need to know them quite well, okay? Especially the concentration gradients. I think that really helps with a question like this, all right? So a few of you got it correct. Some people change their answers a little bit. Trying to be confident in your, in your first answer. If you're really not sure in a question, stick with your first answer because it's normally right okay your first thought is normally right if you're just changing it because you're not quite sure i would stick with your first answer okay right let's carry on so a few short ones here about dna so we've done about this okay so i think these are some quite clever questions make you think so dna is made up of two polynucleotide chains okay so which of the bonds a to D forms between two nitrogenous bases holding the two polynucleotide chains together. So have a thing. So there's obviously a lot, a lot of different bonds in DNA, but which ones are we are we talking about specifically in this example? Give you 30 more seconds. Right, Zaraween, do you want to tell us what kind of bonds we're talking about in this one? Um, I think it's hydrogen. I think it's hydrogen, yeah. Okay, so that's the correct answer there. So I, the, the two I'd be between here is phosphodiester, so A, and hydrogen, yeah? Because they're both in, a, in DNA, aren't they? Okay, so remember, we've got our phosphate, we've got our pento sugar okay and then we've got our base yeah so we get a phosphodiester bond forming to this next pento sugar you remember i won't draw the rest of it okay so that's our phosphodiester bond there okay but then we also have a base on this side i remember that the dna is running the other way okay so this one's going to be upside down and if i can i might draw it on the wrong one but i know i think that's right okay perfect so then we've got let's say this is cytosine and guanine so we've got three between okay and there are hydrogen bonds okay so we've got both in our in our dna haven't we but this question is asking between the two nitrogenous bases okay so that's these hydrogen bonds between the two bases here, okay? 
if it was happening between the phosphate and the pent and the pento sugar, it would be the phosphodiester back uh, phosphodiester bond. Okay, so just make sure you know which bond they're talking about when you answer the question. All right, perfect. So five here. So the structure of a biological molecule is shown below. Okay, so I remember in the lesson we did about this, I had this exact um, diagram up. Okay, so see if you can remember it. You should be able to go between two really, really quickly. So give everyone a second. Okay, let's have a go. Right. So we we look at our molecule, and first of all, we look at our options. So the biggest difference between them is two are hexos and two are pentos to me. They're being described. Okay. So hexos means six carbons and pentos means five carbons, doesn't it? So let's look at our molecule we've been given and see how many, see how many carbons are in it, okay? So let me circle around. So obviously you can see this carbon, okay? So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we've got five carbons. So straight away, we can get rid of A and B. We've not got a hexo sugar here, we've got a pentose sugar, okay? And this is a biological molecule, especially, especially um, Rhea and Zarawin, you're doing an OCR um, that we've we've learned about, okay? And this is in, is in DNA, isn't it, okay? If you look, it's in DNA, okay? So let's have a look at the difference between the two. I might just give them away the answer here, but so, they're both pentose monosacchar monosaccharides, but one's glucose and one's ribose. Okay. So glucose, obviously, we find loads of places. Where's ribose found? Can I remember? What molecule is that? Is it RNA? RNA, yeah. Okay. So RNA. Remember, DNA has deoxyribose. Thanks for that, Aria. Okay. So a little bit different. Okay, so DNA and RNA has a pentose sugar, doesn't it? So we know that ribose must be a pentose sugar, okay? Does anyone know how many carbons glucose has in it? Is it a pentose sugar? No, it's hexose, right? It's six. A hexose sugar, yeah. So it's hexose. So it looks, it looks quite similar. Oh, <laughs> I can't draw a hexagon. It looks, if I just draw the basic structure, okay, so it looks quite similar, but that's the oxygen there, and then it has, you know, the carbon off, okay. So it's really quite similar to our ribose and our deoxyribose, but it's a hexo 